2 Timothy chapter number 2 verse 20. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold. And some silver. And some are made of wood and clay. Now listen now. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions. And the cheap ones are for everyday use. So, now, you can say, why did Apostle Paul use this? Because if we want to look at this from a layman's point of view, or if we want to detach spirituality, that's why when I use stuff to give you an example, it is very, very unspiritual of you to just marry and say, oh, yeah, but this, and, and you're trying to question everything. Calm down. I'm not, I'm not writing... I'm not writing a decision. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to win a Nobel Prize award for the best example bringer of the year. No, I'm just trying to help you understand something. Do you understand this? So you may say here. I mean, if you're trying to be silly here and you don't really want the truth, you can begin to argue with Apostle Paul and say, "Well, if you're trying, because you you would realize that he used this to explain the fact that." There are different kinds of people in the kingdom of God or there are different kinds of responses to God's call. Yes. That's how I would say. That's how yes. I would put it. I don't want to say different kinds of people. So you may say, oh, but the person who purchased them knew what he was doing. If he bought a broom, you already know what a broom is. You don't expect a broom to impress you and then you're going to show it to every visitor that comes. Like, Look at my broom. It's not, you're not gonna, the broom is not something to be proud of. Whereas if you had... An expensive artwork, you put it at a place in your house where people can see it and admire it and compliment you for it. So you can say to me, why? That's, that's, that's the owner's fault. I mean, we shouldn't even use this example because he knows exactly what it is. If you buy a floor mat by your door, it's only good for dusting your foot and just cleaning all the nonsense that you step on. So, and it's still part of the household things, isn't it? Yeah, so... Don't be unspiritual. Understand. That's why. No, I said that to say, if you're just someone who reads the Bible, because I've had people talk to me, oh, but uh, is it written in the Bible? Is it written in the Bible? Show me where it's written in the Bible. Let me know it's written. Even if I show you, you still won't get it. You're still going to. It's not like if I showed you, you will still argue with me. Mm -hmm. You will still argue because the Bible is spiritual. And if you don't have spirit, if you don't have the spiritual discernment, that was a spiritual thing. It is foolishness to a carnal mind. And a carnal mind here doesn't mean a sinner. Even a born again Christian that has not embraced spirituality and is still thinking like an average individual, it is carnal. Carnal simply means to be void of spiritual consciousness. To buy more into the opinion of how things are done in this world as opposed to how things are done as prescribed by the kingdom of God. That is what it means to be carnal. And a carnal man, the Bible says, cannot, he cannot receive the truth of the spirit. He cannot because, it's not because he doesn't just like it. They even sound foolish to him. So someone has a headache and I say, oh, uh, just say a prayer. He's thinking, no, I need paracetamol. What's wrong with you? Did you see this? So he says, ah, I'm feeling the ache. I, I, I think I need to go for a test. Okay, let's just let's just hold hands and pray. And for, no, no, man. Don't be all spiritual. I can feel the pain is spiritually there. I need rub or something. Get me rub. Okay. Yeah, you can have rub there. God didn't redeem us as some people are inferior, some people are superior. That is not God. He redeemed all of us and he gave us the same privileges. Now, what makes us differ from one another at the long run is can be traced down to our response, not the calling. Do you understand this? The calling is perfect, equal, and carries the same weight in, 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 in supply of resources and reward in the... Um, approval of God and the accolade that follows it, it carries the same way. Every calling is a high calling. Now, what makes your calling weighty or light is not the color. It is not the attention or the intention of the color. It is your response. 
So, think about it this way. In a wealthy house, God purchased everything to be gold. However, things in the house have the choice to choose to be gold or to choose not to be gold. So, in a, in a, in a wealthy house, there are utensils made of gold, silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils. No, now, see? So, if I, I've listed gold, silver, clay, and wood. Which one is most expensive? No brainer. Gold, isn't it? It's arranged in the... In the... Um, in the order of how expensive and how valuable they are, isn't it? Now, what makes gold so so it means and following my explanation now, God didn't purchase us for someone to be to be gold at the time of purchase. One person is gold, one person is silver. No, everybody was purchased gold. Everybody was purchased gold. Everybody was purchased gold. Everybody was purchased gold. Or for the sake of analogy, for the sake of explanation, just to help you, okay? Let me flip it. Everybody was purchased clay. Let me flip it. The intention of God is that everything, he wants everything to be gold. He's building the priest nation. He wants everything to be gold. And if you study the tabernacle of Moses, everything, almost everything was overladen with gold. Almost everything. Even the things that were wood were covered in gold. Even the things that were wood were covered in gold. Everything was overladen in gold. So God's intention was for everything to be gold. But at the point of redemption, let's just say for explanation purposes, everything was redeemed as wood. But the high calling for every utensil in this house is that they should be gold articles, gold utensils. But God redeemed them as, as, as clay. Now, how they journey from clay to becoming gold is their choice. In other words, when the Bible says the expensive utensils, what makes this utensil expensive is the destination where it, it is at. It has now become gold. That once upon a time, clay has now become gold. Now, what happens? And it is only this gold that can enter into the prestigious service of the king. Remember, the doormat in Buckingham Palace is still a palace property. In other words, if you steal it, you can still get prosecuted for theft, isn't it? But you can say it's only a doormat. It is the property of the palace. It is a royal doormat. Do you understand this? So also, everybody in the kingdom of God is a citizen of this commonwealth of Zion. It is a citizen of this great, beautiful, powerful nation. But God didn't buy anything. He didn't purchase anything with that so expensive blood of Jesus for that thing to then end up inferior. God wanted everything to match its purchasing price. But whether things stay inferior or they become expensive and important in the house, it is the choice of that thing. In other words, it is your choice. At the point where you were saved, you were saved and given the same heart head start like everybody else. Now, if you become valuable before God, if you increase in worth and value as measured by the scales of the supernatural, and if you will be treated with accolades and pleasantries and abundance of resources of the nation put at your disposal, it is going to be based on your response to your call. What kind of vessel you would be in this beautiful house you would choose. But it is worthy of note to know that the expensive utensils are used for special occasions. They are reserved for special occasions. In other words, you may not start being busy. You may not start by being in demand. God is preparing you for a special occasion. The most expensive necklace that the queen has, she doesn't wear it every day. She wears it for special occasions. And you know that special thing that you have. You know that you're special, the most, the most, the favorite pair of shoes that you have. You don't wear it every day. You don't use it as your school shoes. You get school shoes for school shoes because it's an everyday thing. And you keep your expensive and your important stuff. And most of the time, the way you know the things that you consider important is the price tag, how much you bought it. Yeah. Isn't it? 
I'm teaching you how to be important before God. Because most of the things that you pray to God for, most of the way you want God to treat you, those things are reserved for certain kind of people. It is not just for every Tom, Dick, and Ari. Everybody is not the same in the kingdom of God. Do you understand this? Everybody was redeemed the same. But everybody don't stay the same. Some people take off on your back and go. Some people actually run. And some people are just strolling. Looking around, whistling. And some people are running. Imagine... Wait, have you seen Agates? On your mouth, said, when you hear the God, everybody starts running for their life. Like they're running for their life. Everybody's running. And they're, imagine, imagine you, 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 you shoot the God. On your mark, said, pa. And then people take off. And imagine Usain Bolt begin to look around and say, yeah, and he's do this. <laughs> no, no, he can do all of those before the God. Isn't it? If he does it, it is appreciated. He will get your vision. People will shout, yay! But imagine when the, on your mark, the reason why people were applauding you was because you can run. Do you understand this? And you represent your nation. Now the moment your, the God goes, you're supposed to put in your money's worth. You're supposed to earn your money. Earn the claps and accolades and, ch and, and chants. And, and you are supposed to, that is when you earn it. Imagine at that time, you know, says, I have books and books. I just want to reintroduce myself. Uh, give me the mic, give me the mic. <laughs> and everybody's running towards the finish line. That quickly you would realize. You would realize that what made you important is the lack of it quickly will make you unimportant. People didn't come to see his face. They came to see him run. Do you understand this? You were not saved just for God to see you and say, Ah! Oh. Look at that, look at our cheeks, look at our cheeks. That's my daughter right there. No, that's not who you were saved for. So stop sucking and stop saying, Oh, it's just hard. It's just, just get yourself, get yourself off your palm and run. And run. But you know, it's just, just just stop complaining and pray. Stop complaining and pray. Sing a worship song. Sing praise to the Lord. Thank him and praise him. Keep going. Pro declare the word of the Lord. Sit down and read the word of God and intentionally make a commitment to follow the Holy Spirit. You fall, rise up again. And you fall, you rise up again. And you fall, and you keep rising up until you don't fall anymore. You see babies at a year old learning to walk. They, they take a few steps before they get up again. That's what they just never stop. They just never stop. And that same baby that you're laughing at today will start running and you will have a serious problem now when they start running. Because now you have to catch them, isn't it? But at some point, you didn't need to catch them because they're just lying still on the spot. They can't even roll over by themselves. You have to literally roll them. A time came now they could roll. Now they could crawl. But you see, the damage is, li is, is limited because there are things they can't reach. A time comes, they start standing up. And then a time comes, they're struggling to walk. You're thinking, yeah, you know, they can't really do much. You can still leave them unattended sometimes. But when they begin to really, really move, then now you need to have like seven eyes, isn't it? You have to be like the spirit of the Lord, like the living creatures, <laughs> having eyes all over them. So I'm saying to you that this one timid you and scared, afraid, feeling little you. I'm telling you how to shake off those things and grow. Apostle Paul said, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I reasoned like a child. He said, but when I grow up, I drop childish things. And what makes you grow up is because you begin to understand that I was called with a high calling. There is an expectation of, of my life. There is an expectation of God on my life. There is certain things that God expects me to become and to do for him. And then you begin to put in the details of the requirement required for you to qualify to enter the king's service. You begin to work hard. Separating yourself from this world, avoiding foolish worthless talks. And giving attention to the details of learning truth, departing from evil, knowing that you are owned by God, and understanding that there is a there is a standard, there is a gold standard that God expects. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones. Did you see this? In God, so the cheap ones were not made cheap by God; they stayed cheap. They chose to be cheap. Either by their actions or inactions, they chose to be cheap. They did not submit themselves to the demands or the, the details of being made gold. And I'll show you how gold are made. 
If you keep yourself pure, you will. No, 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 no. The cheap ones are for everyday use. Did you see this? That is our everyday Christians. All they are good for is just when people are mentioning their religion. I am Buddhist, I am Hindu, I am Muslim, I am Christian. That's all they are good for. Yeah, and they can say, brother, they can, they, can, they can speak in tongues. They can say, bless you, bless you, brother, bless you, sister. They can put some posts on Instagram and, 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 and put some scripture, scripture and put your scripture <laughs> passage and put some quotes. Uh, um, you will make it today. Send it to 15,000 people. That, that's all they're good for. Don't be like that. <laughs> Don't be. It's not worth it. It's not, you might as well just go, ju just go sin or something. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Listen to me. Your life will not change. It's not like God is just going to think, oh, well, she's... They don't bless you based on how long you've been in the kingdom. Say, ah, she's done 10 years. She's done 10 years. She's done 10 years. 10-year reward. No! There's no 10-year reward. There's no 10-year reward. You must work hard to move from being the everyday use thing to the expensive special use, special location you tend to. And verse 21, this blows my mind. He says, if you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil. So, Apostle Paul told you exactly what to do. It is not ambiguous. So, I'm not going to leave you with ambiguity tonight. I'm telling you exactly how to become expensive. It is directly proportional to the level of your purity. Simple. Simple. And why, how do I know this? See, this is the Holy Spirit. So, it makes perfect sense for me to tell you we were all bought clay. Because at the time we're saved, we still have all manner of impurity. We still have, listen to me, only your spirit was born again. Your soul wasn't, your body wasn't. That is why you still feel like watching pornography after you've been saved. It is because the, the sin is still in your flesh. And you have to deal with that. You have to daily carry your cross and follow Christ. You have to daily die to the corruption of this world. You have to daily deny yourself and daily choose God. Daily deny, daily choose God. This is purification. Do you understand this? Receiving, accepting the help that the Holy Spirit provides and applying your heart to the details of purity. This is how to move from cheap stuff to expensive stuff. And until then, certain things just remain a dream, great and precious promise. It will not happen. And I'm not cursing you. Can think, why are you so harsh? I'm telling you the truth. Except you want me to lie to you. Like, people have been lied to many years, and it looks like God is weak. It looks like God has gone to Ibiza or something. He's gone on holiday. God is just partying and he's doing his song baby. No! God is not troubled. His power has not waned. He is not weak. His arms are not too short that he cannot reach you. His eyes are not too blind, neither is he too deaf that he cannot hear you. The Bible says, it is our iniquity that has created a gap between us and him. That is direct scripture. Will the one who created the eyes not be able to see? All this one that you're crying, God, can you not see me? Can you? He can, be, he can see you. He can see you. Lord, can you not hear me? You don't need to supply him information. It is not your prayer that would make him know what you need. He knows what you need before you even ask. Before you, before it even entered your heart. He planned every day of your life, remember? So he's not taking your life on a day-by-day -day basis. That's you. That's not God. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans of good and not of evil. And the Bible says in, 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 in Ephesians chapter number 1. He says, God... He prepared, he, like told, he chose us in Christ from the foundations of the earth to present us to himself holy and blameless. This is the this is the destination you should be gravitating towards. It is being presentable, holy and blameless, so that he can approve you and then send you and admit you into the king's service. And then he can send you on prestigious mission. People want to go on prestigious missions for God and they don't want to, they don't want to be made gold. And the only ones God said, the standard is gold standard. It is the code. The code is purity. The messenger code in the kingdom is purity. So you want to increase your net worth in the spirit. Be pure. Subscribe to the school of purity. And the one who makes you pure is the Holy Spirit. His name is the Holy Spirit. Do you understand this? His name implies his personality. His name, Aliko Kwatapalida Nako Silas. He is the Holy Spirit. So wrong mind with a fool, you become foolish. Wrong mind with the Holy One, you become holy. Mm -hmm. 
and you become fitting for the king's service. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master's use for every good work. See, every good work that the master has, he doesn't just use anybody. He doesn't just use everybody. He uses those who are ready for the master's use. And who are the ones that are ready? Those who have given attention to the details of purity. These are the ones that can enter. These are the king's men. These are the ones who enter into the king's service. These are the vessels unto honor. Do you understand this? It is not far-fetched. It is not something so high that you can say, who's going to go to heaven and go bring God? I told you I brought you a cheat sheet tonight. This is the cheat sheet. This is how to become important to God. This is how to become valuable to God. This is how to get God to commit the resources of the kingdom to follow your assignment. And angels are on standby and nobody can touch you. God will rebuke kings for your sake. He will quiet raging seas. He will silence the boasting of nations for the sake of one man. God is the kind of God that exchanges life for life. He exchanges the cheap things for expensive. When he finds people who can pay attention to the details of purity, he, he, will, he will exchange chaff. That means what is chaff to the, to the wheat? Oh, you can't have your water. But you see, the wheat, it, it grows with the chaff, but it is separated. What we really want is the wheat. So at the time that you were saved, you were saved as corn of wheat wrapped in chaff. But God doesn't need the chaff. So he pours grace in abundance so that you can put off. Bible says, put off your old nature and nature and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put off, put off, put off. Because until you put off the sinful nature and put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not ready for the master's use. And you can be a Christian and still be wearing your sinful nature. <laughs> 